pour yourself a cold one and join us for an hour filled to the brim with fun. It hurts in my ears right now. Entertainment. Cheeky, cheeky, bang, bang. Information. I need some water and a washcloth. And a little weirdness. Can I be a duck? Yeah, I don't, I don't think they want me to be a duck. It's Happy Hour with DJ Kyle, presented by SRD Financial Advisors. Hey, welcome to Happy Hour with DJ Kyle. I'm your host, and I want to say thanks to our title sponsor today, SRG Financial Advisors, home of the Mile Marker Formula. Also, thanks to Ozark Barge and Dock. If you need one of those uh, docks all built up this summer, go talk to them. Our veterinary at the lake, they're uh, sponsoring our furry friends today. And American Elm Company, thank you for all this lovely decor that we have going on. Great show lined up for you. We're gonna talk to Stacy Strickland from Harley Davidson, Lake of the Ozarks, and she's gonna be talking about those Ozark Rides Rally that's coming up in May. We also visit a brewery collectible show where I find a couple items and learn a lot about my new collectibles that I'm starting. And we talk with uh, Professor Jim Paisley, and today, we're gonna learn all about the Berlin Wall in the time that we have. So all of that and more, and of course we check in with uh, Megan at our furry friends and we see about a cat named Feyre. I think that's right. Well, more than that, right here on Happy Hour with DJ Kyle. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock now celebrating 35 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 35 years. Hey, welcome back to Happy Hour, and we have a special guest in the studio. We have Stacy Strickland from our Harley Davidson store. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for good. having me. Well, I'm glad to have you on the store on, on the uh, show today. So, tell us a little bit about uh, what is going on at the Harley Davidson store right now. I know that uh, this year is a big year for not only your your store but just Harley Davidson in general. It is. Yes, our store, our dealership. This is our 25th year. Um, so we're going to do a celebration for that in June. Um, Harley Davidson as a whole, it's their 120th anniversary year. Um, so a lot of anniversary celebrations going on this year. Yeah, yeah. big, big year for Harley Davidson. Also um, a big year, you guys are putting together something that's, that's really amazing. Every year we have a bike fest here at Lake of the Ozarks and that happens in September the 13th through 17th this year. Now um, in September, of course, there's just bikes galore and yes. you guys i'm sure are just working every hour of the day like non-stop you're so busy there mm -hmm. at, at the store you can't go and and you know give anyone bike lessons or take them out or anything like that because it's so busy yes. so you came up with something really cool why don't you tell us about the ozark rides rally and that comes up in may yes so in may we have the ozark rides rally and it is our third year doing that one. Uh, the Ozark Ride Rally came about because at Bike Fest, everyone's like, hey, what are some good roads to ride? And we're like, we don't have time. <laughs> so 
So we started the Ozark Rides Rally so that we could do guided tours of the area. So come, come in May, the 11th through the 13th, um, sign up for a guided ride and we have somebody that guides you on different roads throughout the area. Yeah, because Lake of the Ozarks obviously is filled with so many great roads to drive down, but if you don't know those roads and you don't know how to get to those hmm. places and those different bars and, and things like that, then you, there's no way for you to to get there. So I love this not. idea. So how how did this how did this become a thing? Was this just everyone sitting in a in an office, or was it just those bike bike fest uh, weeks where it's like everything is so busy? We need to have a time where we can teach people all these cool roads at Lake of the Ozarks. It was. Well, it's funny you mention that because it had been an idea of the owner uh, for the Lake of the Ozarks Harley Davidson to do a spring rally for a long time, uh -huh. um, and I just was an over um, over motivated employee, and I was like, "Let's do it!" So <laughs> now we're doing it. Well, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Now, now, how can um, how can like local businesses? get involved in this? Like, are um, you needing sponsorship or? We are looking for sponsorships. What's that? Depending on your sponsorship level gets you different variations of advertising and event involvement. Um, basically, we're also just looking for any local establishments that want to be involved in the event in general because, again, you know, it's a similar bike fest. We want people to be able to be involved. We want them to come to the area. We want them to enjoy Lake of the Ozarks in a different way. Um, so we're absolutely looking for sponsors, vendors, anyone that wants to participate and be a part of the Ozark Rides Rally. So it, someone like me, I don't have a motorcycle. I haven't driven a motorcycle. Is that something that I could just hop on another bike with someone? And I mean, if somebody wanted you on the back, you know, they're like, yeah, ride with me. Absolutely. Um, so that one's a little tricky, but I mean, we want people to come to check yeah. it out, to meet people, um, to find out ways that they can start riding motorcycles and stuff like that. So that's great. Yeah. We just want and, people to come. And I understand that, uh, you know, like the bike fest, they do a big bike giveaway. You guys are talking about you're going to be doing a bike giveaway for this as well? We are, yes. We're going to give a bike away this year. Nice. So, and it's not going to, you have to do things to get entered, but not. it's not going to be like set up like Bike Fest. It's going to be a little okay. different. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. So, so that bike is, uh, we're, we're going to have some pictures of it uh, before too long. And, yes. uh, and we're going to be doing some different things to get that bike at the Ozark Rides uh, uh, rally that we have going on. You guys have food vendors, um, all, all sorts of stuff that's going to be set up during those yes. uh, days. We're open to merchandise and food vendors. So if you're a merchandise or food vendor, get a hold of me. Um, but yeah, we're welcoming all kinds of vendors. Yeah. We, want, we want there to be things for people to do when they come to yeah. hang out with us. So. Well, yeah. not, not only do you have that, but uh, um, we have uh, the bike giveaway, the anniversary. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that's uh, going to go around, just the excitement of the anniversary, not only of your store, but the 120 years for uh, Harley Davidson. Um, it, again, if you're looking to uh, sponsor this, or maybe, like, would there be something, uh, a need for any of the restaurants or bars saying, hey, you could stop at our place. We'd love for you to... Oh, come absolutely. by and be a sponsor or whatever to absolutely well see and that's the thing we're doing guided rides which those go around so you get advertising off of that and then we are also doing uh, what we call ride maps we'll hand these out in the dealership throughout the whole year um, and we can with your sponsorship put your logo and your business as a stop on oh, those nice. maps and those get handed out through the dealership not only during the ozark rides rally but through the whole year which includes bike fest yeah. time as well so, well that's great yeah now and and what's the cost for someone to get involved in this just to like do the ride like to show up and do the guided uh, rides to do the rides those are absolutely free if somebody wants to come get on a guided ride be led around the lake it's absolutely free you just have to get on the reservation list um, we do limit the number of people that can be on each ride so they do tend to fill up um, yeah. right before the event will open their registration up for the rides too. okay so. and so where where would someone go and register to get to get on one of these rides. Is to that... the official event website. Ooh, ah, yeah. ah, right? official. Yes, very official. Okay, where, where's the official event <laughs> that website? That is ozarkridesrally.com. Or okay. they can, of course, come to Lake of the Ozarks, harleydavidson.com and get similar information there too. So. Okay, so lots of information online. And even, even if you don't have a motorcycle, you're welcome to show up. It's May 11th through the 13th. And you could just show up and check out all the vendors, look at the bikes, maybe you might end up buying a bike. Maybe. It's and possible. then hop on one of those guided guided tours. Sounds like a really good day to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. So we're looking for some great weather in May. Um, and of course, uh, 
that's just going to be a, a stepping point to get ready for Bike Fest. Are you ready to do a big event in May and then also one in September? <laughs> mm, I mean, we're always ready, but we're always working on it too. It oh keeps yeah, it, it keeps us busy. Oh, I'm, that I'm sure. Yeah. So, what are some other things that you have uh, planned at at your place for this summer? Um, well, we are doing our second year, what we call our Summer Ride Challenge. Now, this will start in May, just after the Ozarks, Ozark Rides Rally. Um, we basically, whoever rides the most miles over a certain period of time, they can win a gift card. So that's really cool. Oh, yeah. Neat. So it's just kind of like a fun little challenge that we can do with our customers um, in the area. Um, and then because of that event, we're scheduling different rides to a few bars and restaurants. Um, so like show up at the dealership on certain days, leave, go hang out at this place with, you know, new people, old people, well, not old people, but you know, old, new friends, <laughs> seasoned, old friends. Yes. The seasoned people. Yes, maybe. seasoned people, ones you don't know, ones you do know, um, and just kind of hang out. So That's really but cool. We're, we're trying to encourage people to get out and ride and just get together and yeah. have a good time. It's that camaraderie of, of just getting together. I have a bike, you have a bike, let's go and do bikes together yes. and let's let's, let's uh, get some wind therapy together <laughs> some wind yes. therapy yeah i love it well ozark rides rally again may 11th through uh, may 13th and it's lake tv's newest partner harley davidson and we're so thankful that uh, you guys are are here with us today to to talk about this and the guided rides that we have going on and of course you can find out more information at what's the website again OzarkRidesRally.com. OzarkRidesRally.com. And uh, check out all the stuff that we have going on there. The 25th anniversary of Harley Davidson Lake Ozark, um, 120 years for Harley Davidson. And of course, this is just going to be the best third anniversary for this. Uh, this is the third year having the Ozark Rides Rally. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to the success that you guys are going to have this year. So. I, I am too. Absolutely. I really am too. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you again for coming on the Thanks show. For having and, me. and definitely appreciate it. So again, if you want to get uh, some more information, that's OzarkRidesRally.com. And thank you again for tuning in to Happy Hour with DJ Kyle. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offer routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. Our Veterinary, with six convenient locations, the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. Time for another edition of Cup of Coffee right here at Slumberland at the Lake. And this week, we'll try to update you on the shooting in Osage Beach. Yeah, find out what's going on with that. Osage Nation has a new CEO, but they're still planning on a casino here. And we'll talk about medicinal marijuana. Could it help concussed NFL players recover quicker? And you know who's going to the Super Bowl? The Chiefs. Chiefs. How about that? Hey, hey, it's happy hour, and I'll tell you what, I am quite happy. We are at the Brewery Collectible Show at Innit Grand Glaze. That word still, brewery, still gets me. I, that's just a tough word. But needless to say, I brought my World's Fair beer. This is my first piece of collectible item for brewery collecting. And you'll see back behind me, it says, there's a beer can show here today. 
So let's go in and see if we can find a match to my World's Fair beer. Come on. This is pre-prohibition. And he said, he was telling me a little bit ago about how the bottles were heavier than larger and heavier back then. And then you fill them up with beer. So this case had to have weighed a lot. But that's why you drink one before you pick up the case and it's a little lighter. What's your favorite piece that you have out right now? Oh, now that is really cool. So tell me a little bit about this uh, glass here. They were only out about three months. Billy Carter, like um, Jimmy Carter's brother, put it out. It lasted maybe from September of 77 to about December. Okay, so grand raffle prizes. These are the prizes. I'm hoping to win one or all of these. We have our $20 in tickets. Hopefully I can take something home other than my beer. But let's go see if we can still find our match. Come on. Look at this. This makes me feel very, very large. People are coming in, walking in here, getting signed up for the drawings. There's raffle prizes going on, raffle drawings going on, and just the knowledge that all of these people have at this place is overwhelming. You could stop and chat with any one of these people about their collection or other collections. They know everything. Okay, so there's a lot of looking to do here, but there's also some shopping to do. So I'm gonna get over here. I'm interested in buying one of these cans. This, this particular table is, um, all the proceeds goes for a, um, a, a man who passed away a little over a year ago. He was a member of the club. And so this is some of his collection that we've been cleaning out over the past year. So his uh, sister is taking care of their bro younger brother who has some medical, a lifetime medical issues. Yeah. Because um, Alan, who passed away, took care of his brother yeah. most of his life. So, that is neat. This, this is really cool because this is just like a family that comes together, supporting each other, helping each other out. And, and you guys all get together. You get to show your collectibles, but other people get to partake in this. And I think I would like to help the cause. But the only problem is the can that I'm wanting is, no, it's right in the middle. It's, and we got it. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. So I've got my gallon can and I'm ready to go. That's my second collectible piece. Have you found a good collectible here? Are you collecting dog biscuits? You don't talk very much, do you? All right, it's time for the drawing. Well, we're here with Rick, and Rick, what a great turnout this has already been. And all of the, all of the things that are you could just walk around and see so much history on all of the brewery collectible things. Now, how many vendors do you uh, end up having uh, this year? Uh, last count, I had about 82 people 
registered and about that many tables. So it, yeah, we're doing great. What do you expect to see next year or in the coming years from this event right here? Oh, good question. Well, it's been growing every year, a little bit year over year. And we, of course we were slow during the COVID years, but uh, this is our big bounce back year for sure. Um, so we've got record attendance, which we are very grateful for, and uh, we got the word out on the local websites and the television coverage, which we greatly appreciate. So we, you know, we would hope to at least at least stay at this pace and keep gradually growing. Still looking for my World's Fair beer. I don't think anyone collects this. I don't think this is a collectible. I might have given up. You don't happen to have a World's Fair beer, do you? Let's see. Uh, or can you tell me about my World's Fair beer? I brought this in. I believe they came out in 1982. There was a series of about eight different ones, different color. It was basically the same beer. Uh, I forget what the brewery was that had it, but. Uh, the World's Fair was in Tennessee that year, I know that, but uh, back in the day it was a highly sought after can at the time. Yeah. And and now I've, I think I've kind of given up and found that maybe this isn't a sought after can because I can't find its match or anything, or maybe this is the collectible of the day. Probably not, probably not. Oh, look what we have. Look what we found, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We found our World's Fair beer partner right there. Now, now tell me, so so these all came out in the same year, is that right? Yeah, it was the same brewery that put it out. Uh, I can't remember which one it was, whether it was Fall City or, or Fall Staff. I think I saw it on here somewhere. Great, Great Lakes Brewery, does that sound right? It's been so long since I've seen those, yeah. but... Uh, I seen that and I'm like, I seen your prior video. I said, I got to bring that in for him. Oh, so. that is awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. How much do I owe you for the uh, work? No way. Look at there. This is going to proudly be on our Lake TV uh, on my uh, shelf right back behind me. So thank you so much. Let me, let me set these down because I have to shake your hand. I appreciate that. And now I'm adding to my collection. Go. Hopefully you'll find a few more here. Absolutely. And, and we'll see you next year, and I'll have a bigger collection. Let me show you something else that used to be quite popular. It was the hat, crocheted hats with the beer cans cut out that uh, you know people used to collect back in the day. And my brother Roland from Ohio sent this to me for Christmas. And so there you have it. Merry Christmas, Roland. <laughs> Right, we are here with Tom. Thank you so much for letting us come out here. This is such a great event that you have going on. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what we have going on and uh, the differences between the different chapters that you have? We've got three chapters from the Brewery Collectibles Club of America that co-sponsor the event. Those chapters are the Gateway Chapter out of St. Louis, Missouri. You've got the KC's Best out of uh, Kansas City. And then you have the Missouri Chapter from uh, the Springfield area, Springfield, Missouri. Uh, they're all members, uh, their chapters are all members of the Brewery Collectibles Club of America. It's an organization that's over 50 years old. We just celebrated our 50th convention two years ago in St. Louis. We have over 3,000 members worldwide. We're in all U.S. states, 26 international countries, and all U.S. territories. Yeah, and I feel like those members are going to grow from just the people walking around here and seeing people's eyes light up when they see all the signs and all the cans and all the different collectibles. And I've been walking around all day today with my World's Fair beer. And I have to say, I came here with the expectation of finding a match, and just now, I have to show you what I found. Walking by one of the tables, I had my beer out and he said, well, guess what? I have one of those, so I'm taking home now my second collector's piece 
from this show right here. So thank you for being a part of that. We need to get you a BCCA membership going. That's right. Uh, let me let me get uh, get signed up on that. Now, how could someone uh, become a member or learn more about uh, your your organization that you have going on? The Brewery Collectibles Club of America's website is bcca.com. Our, our, we have a, a direct line in the St. Louis area. Our home, international offices are in Fenton, Missouri. So you can get it through uh, area code 636-343-6486 is the number there. Uh, offices are open Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 Central Time. What do you expect to see uh, from this event um, in the next year and coming years after that? The event will grow. It's gone through several different groups of supporters and it's because they get to the point where age takes away from the fun of coming uh, by their specific jobs, the hospitality rooms that they prepare and making sure everything gets done, the registrations and things of that nature, the negotiations with the hotel, making sure the hotel has the, what the capacity is. And we basically grew beyond the capacity of one room and are now in a second room here, which is always a pleasant surprise. You know, it, if you take a look at the what's here, if it has the name of a beer or a brewery on it, you're going to find it here. And I mean anything, uh, buttons, ink pens, uh, a receipt from a distributorship showing how many cases were sold to a vendor, on and on and on. Second World Fair can. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you'll find anything here. Second World Fair can is right, absolutely. If you want to even just learn about this, go to their website, come to uh, one of these events. This is just so great because you could walk around and everyone is so smart about all the uh, collectibles and all the items that uh, they have. But not only the ones that they have, but even, even the ones that other people have. So if you want to just pick someone's brain, this is the place to be. Thank you guys so much. I point out two quick things. On the bcca.com website, you can go to the website and find uh, craft breweries. There's a craft brewery listing. So if you're going on a vacation and want to stop in a craft brewery, it's listed there. Also, there is a schedule of events like this that you can find in, in your specific region and get into it and, and support the people. Well, I got my stuff from the Brewery Collectible Show. And I think I did pretty all right. I found my World's Fair beer match, and uh, I'm taking home another big gallon-sized beer can. And I have a Super Bowl beer. This is this is a great day at the Brewery Collectible Show, and that's a wrap. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock now celebrating 35 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 35 years. Welcome back to Happy Hour, sponsored by SRG Financial Advisors, home of the Mile Marker Club. I'm DJ Kyle, and we have a special guest. We have Jim Paisley with us, our history guru. And Jim, I'm very excited about having you on today. I'm tickled to death to be here. So great, here, great working with you. Here's the thing. I got back on, uh, we, we had a vacation to Germany. I uh, went to Germany, went to Berlin, and the history of Berlin you just walk around and you're just taking pictures and you're seeing all these things that you've seen on news and you know in in history books and whatever but here's the thing jim 
I didn't pay attention to history when I was in high school. I did just enough to like get my grades, but sometimes I would like learn about something and not quite learn about it. Mm -hmm. And when we went to Berlin and we saw the Berlin Wall, of course, you know, everyone's there taking pictures. We're taking pictures and videos and, and looking at this thing that is such a piece of history. And I was going, I'm not really sure if I know a whole lot about the Berlin Wall. I remember I was, you know, old enough to remember when Ronald Reagan gave a speech and said, Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And I remember watching the wall come down. And as a kid, I was like, I don't get, why are they so excited about tearing down a wall? Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that we have you on the show today I'm happy to, to talk here. about the Berlin Wall. And another thing that I wanna share with you, I actually have a, a piece of the Berlin Wall awesome. that uh, we got while we were in Berlin. Great. So I brought that back and here's the certification that says that it really is a real piece of the uh, Berlin Wall. So nice. let's talk about this piece of history and, and how it plays a role in, in our lives. All right, well, here we go. This is a, it's a fascinating story. And by the way, if you wanna see what that wall looks like and you don't wanna make the, the expense <laughs> of going all the way over, there's a huge section of that Berlin Wall in, in Fulton. Uh-huh, yeah. In Fulton, Missouri, there at the uh, Churchill uh, library and, yep, and it's so got, it's like the cutout of, oh, of the yeah. people. Yeah, I think it, that's it, a neat one. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about this. And this, this don't feel bad. You know, when <laughs> I was in high school, history was not my favorite year. You had to memorize all those names and dates, and who cares? They're all dead anyhow. But now right? it's like I want to know. Like back then, it was know. like ah, oh, this uh, is just yeah, something in know. a book. But is this you know, be on the test. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah I just want to learn it for yeah. the test and then be done with it. So the nice thing here is there's not going to be a quiz. Okay, so sit back and relax. And then what I used to tell my students: just listen to the story. The story, that, that's what's really fascinating about history is its stories. And when you look at it from that standpoint, you can remember a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So let's go all the way back to 1948, all right? Now, as we come to the end of World War II, they had a problem. They had to decide, what are we going to do with Germany? Because Germany is going to lose this thing. They, they lost, and, and now we've got this country we're going to have to divide everything up amongst the winners. Now there were people like France said, let's just do away with Germany. Let's make it go away. We'll just divide the whole thing up and we'll be done with it. You can't do that. You know, I mean, it's a big industrial base and everything. And, it's, you know, what about all the people that are there? So what they decided to do is they said, we're going to take Germany itself and we're going to divide it into four sections. So imagine, if you will, the whole country and dividing it up into four sections equal sections. And you had France, England, the United States, and the Soviet Union. Each got a piece. Okay. All right? Now, with that, when you had those four sections, they had another problem in the fact that Berlin, which was the capital of Germany, fell in the middle of the Soviet section, the Russian section. Okay. It's all by itself. It's like a little island sitting up there in the corner. Yeah. Okay? And so you have basically these four sections and within it you had Berlin and they said okay what are we going to do with that and they talked back and forth trying to decide what to do and they finally couldn't come to an agreement and they said we'll take the city itself and do the same thing we'll divide it into four sections so okay. the city of Berlin actually had a French section a US section a British section and a Soviet section okay all right so you have the big section, the, the big country divided into four, and then this little island up here divided into four. Now, here's the thing. The island is sitting in the Soviet section, and the Soviets are like, we don't like the idea of having a city of three million people with three quarters of them mm -hmm. answering to the French and the British and the U.S. And eventually they said, we're not going to have that. And so what they did is the Soviets cut off all the roads, all the railroads and everything into the city and okay. said, absolutely, we're going to starve them out until the British, French and U.S. give us the other part of the city. And we didn't have any way to supply the city. They didn't have any food, didn't have yeah. any coal or anything coming in. And so we decided that we're going to do it by air. And this is the famous Berlin airlift you hear about. Uh -huh. Okay. So what happens is they start flying in everything that a city of three million people <laughs> needs 
to survive. Which is a lot of flying That's in. That's a I lot of assume. flying yeah. in. I mean, it's <laughs> huge amount of, of, of the effort to do this. And bear in mind, they loaded planes up with coal because everybody's home was heated with coal as uh -huh. well. And they had planes that literally traveled there and off offloaded coal so people could heat their homes. Wow. Everything, food, you name it, all right? Now, <clears throat> what happened is this airlift was very successful. I mean, we, we hauled in about 2.3 2 million tons of cargo. Wow. I mean, I think there was something like, uh, it was like 300,000 flights. Now, here's the thing. Berlin is this little island, and it mm -hmm. had its own airport. And so we're flying the stuff into the airport. Now, we can't get there by road yeah, or by rail. Because that's all cut off. It's now. all cut off. Well, we were so successful in doing that that eventually the Soviets said, it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, they're just going to keep bringing this down. stuff. Yeah. And so they sat there and said, well, fine. And so the, they finally, the Soviets said, go ahead and open the roads and the railroads back up. All right. But this is like I say, after we had spent all this money and effort of trying to supply all mm -hmm. these supplies, like I say, 2.3 million tons of stuff. All right. Now, <clears throat> what we saw happen then is even though Berlin is located, you know, within the Soviet part of the country, it's a hundred miles from the border with the other three sections, okay? Okay. And so what we see eventually happen is that the French, U.S., and, and uh, British sections okay. combined together. Now look at the big country. They combined together and created West Germany. Those three sections combined together and made West Germany. I see. The section that was up in the corner over here becomes East Germany. All right? Yeah. So you basically got kind of a Pac-Man thing with this little mm -hmm. So there's always that dot there in the yes, middle. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So what happens is the Soviets are still not happy. They don't like the, the whole idea of this whole thing. Nothing can make them happy. Right. Now, <laughs> the people that are living in East Germany, they hate being under Soviet rule. Mm -hmm. It's a socialist society, it's terrible, and they're hearing about what's happening in West Germany where it's all capitalist and people have cars and food and yeah. you know, everything going great, all right? Well, they want to get out of the Soviet sector. Gotcha. And the only way they can do that is to go to Berlin and get into the western part of Berlin, mm -hmm. West Berlin, you had East Berlin and West Berlin, because in Berlin they combined all that together, yeah. okay? Uh, the, the Western part and then the Eastern part was controlled by the Soviets. Well, people started coming across into Berlin where they could get on a plane because they had an airport uh -huh. and they could fly out of Berlin to West Germany. Okay. That's how they're getting their freedom. Gotcha. All right? And literally hundreds of thousands of people are leaving the Soviet section of Germany and going to Berlin, the little island, and flying over to the west part. I see. Okay. So, so that's, th that's their way yeah. out. So think about it like, think about it today if, if you've got Camden County and you divided it into four sections mm -hmm. and Camdenton fell into the Soviet section yeah. and it has an airport, okay? Well, what happened was, is people were like fleeing from the other parts of Camden County to get to the airport so they could get that. So they could get out. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so what happens is, is the Soviets are sitting there thinking, man, you know, these guys are persistent if yeah. nothing else. <laughs> and so what they decided to do is that's when they decided to build this wall. All right. Now, like I say, when I, when I first started studying it, you know, years ago in high school, I didn't, it didn't make much sense to me. I thought one big long wall. Yeah. like the Great Wall of China. Yeah, that's kind of what right. I pictured. Just but instead, what this is, it's a wall around the city of Berlin. It's a oh. circle. The wall oh, okay. is a circle. okay, so that Pac-Man that you were talking yes. about, this is the, and this so it's is, a round wall. The wall was built to keep the people from getting into Berlin so that they get on a plane and fly out. Huh. So it's not a straight wall. It's yeah. a wall basically keeping the people of West Berlin in. To access that, right. that airport. And to keep everybody around them from getting in there so they can fly out. Gotcha. Huh. Isn't that something? So, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's, now, now, it, now it makes a little bit more sense yeah. to me. that. And, and what what's fascinating is that when they did this, they, they turned around and decided, okay, 
we've got to stop this because the people that are leaving are doctors and lawyers and, and uh, engineers. The, the, they're the people who said this is not good living yeah. in Soviet rule, mm -hmm. you know, and we can't even utilize our, our talent, talents at all. So they turned around and they're fleeing like crazy. And finally, the Soviets said, we're going to build a wall around this thing. Now, here's the bad part about it, okay? The bad part is, is just like we're sitting here in your studio right now, when you go to leave to go home, what would you do if when you left here and went home to your family, you can't get there? Because while we've been in here, somebody put a wall around where you live. Huh. All right? So now, it was just, it was that quick. It wasn't like, we're planning this wall. Here in the next two or three months, we plan to have it built. And, and here's the thing, you know, it wasn't really a wall to start. What it was is overnight, the Soviet troops came in and they stretched barbed wire and set up machine gun nests and everything around mm -hmm. the whole perimeter of West Berlin. So if you had kids at a friend's house spending the night tonight mm -hmm. with their friends, if they happen to be on the other side of that street two blocks away, yeah. You don't get to see your kids again until they're 40. Wow. Right. Wow, that is crazy to, to think. Because, yeah, I never, I never knew that. I always just thought, well, the Berlin Wall was something that, you know, how all construction works. It right. takes a while to get there. Yeah, you know, and so they basically hemmed in that, that city and locked it down to where nobody could get in or out of it. Hmm. Okay. Now, like I say, they still have their airport. Yeah. Okay. But they've locked this whole city down. And so we see that people are, are trying still to flee across that wall. Yeah. Because at, as you see here, you know, they mm -hmm. eventually made it more permanent. And they had, you know, had, it was actually two walls. They built one and then another one here. And there was a no man's land in between. Yeah. And machine gun nests and everything. So mm -hmm. people for years tried to get across. Would and, you know, probably about 500 people died wow. trying. Some people did were successful. They managed to get through the sewers or they jumped out windows where apartment buildings were up close to the wall, that sort of thing. But it was, it was just beyond comprehension, you know, that here you've got this, in modern times, you've got people that are, are yeah. hemmed in an entire city. And so we see, you know, jumping all the way forward, what we see happen is that we come to 1961, and this is where where you were talking to me earlier about everybody remembers Ronald Reagan saying, "Mr. Mm -hmm. Gorbachev, tear down this wall." Yeah. Okay. That's what the wall was all about. Okay. And so, what we see is that in 1961, when when we saw this with with Reagan and them pushing to tear down the wall, there were about a thousand East Germans fleeing on a regular basis, trying, trying to, to, to get to the other, other side, okay? Mm -hmm. And in August of 61 the, is when the, the uh, Russians built this wall. Yeah. In August of 61, okay? And this became the, the famous Berlin Wall, yeah. all right? And so we sit there and, and, and look at it, and it, it's hard for us to, to comprehend, but from 61 until 1989, 1989, yeah. from 61 to 89, bear in mind, your five-year-old's over there at a friend's house. Mm -hmm. And okay. they can't get back home now. Can't, be, can't get back home. Wow. All right. And so now what happens is Gorbachev comes in with his idea of, they called it uh, glasnost, okay, mm -hmm. and, and openness. And he's, he's doing what he can to diplomatically bring Russia into the rest of the world. And eventually, with all the pressure from the U.S. and from Reagan, they, you know, they're off saying, tear down this wall. They were successful in getting the Soviets to finally say, you know what? Enough is enough. Enough's enough. Yeah. And they said, we're going to let people cross through the openings. And that's, that opened up Pandora's box. Then, yeah. Then here comes everybody flooding across the wall. Mm -hmm. And this is where they start tearing chunks of it down yep. and opens the whole thing back up to where then you wind up with Berlin being totally free of this oppression by yeah. the Soviet sector. Wow. Wow. Isn't that amazing. Jim, thank you, you so much. You I've bet. learned I've learned so much in this just few moments 
that uh, I feel like I missed out on when I was in high school well, trying it, to learn it. You isn't know? it fascinating, too, that, that I find it hard to comprehend what that would have been like? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The fear, the, the oppression. The... And, and just being in a, in a city of that many people and know that you're completely surrounded. Yep. There's Can't no way anywhere. no way to get out other than to get on a plane and fly out. And wow. you're you're completely surrounded and to have it last that long. You know, when you go from 61 to 89, mm -hmm. I mean there's people who hadn't seen their parents and your parents died while they were they yeah. were gone. You know, they're a block away. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, but you still can't uh, see them. It is just uh beyond anybody's comprehension of what that had to be like yeah and so you know when with, i'm so jealous i i've been to europe but i didn't get to berlin it's still mm -hmm. on my bucket list but that's <laughs> one of the places I'd, I'd love to go just because of that history yeah. just just to to look at it and say mm -hmm. wow and, and talk about stories think what those how many of those people who were in west berlin the stories that they probably have oh yeah about being separated from everybody oh yeah absolutely you know that is just it's you know, mind-boggling yeah, well, like i say it'd be like living in camdenton and not being able to go anywhere else in missouri yeah just stuck stuck no vacations right no summer summer nights out or exactly. anything like that exactly well jim thank you so much for bringing the story to life for all of us you bet and and i look forward to uh oh. more conversations with I'm, you i feel like i could just sit here I'm, and chat all I'm day long i'm planning on it you bet <laughs> well thank you again for thank coming you. on the show more happy hour coming up right after this While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock now celebrating 35 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 35 years. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offer routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. Our Veterinary, with six convenient locations, the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. Welcome to another Furry Friends here on Lake TV, presented by our veterinary. I'm here with Mary Meowmy Tilly, who is uh, currently getting attacked by a cat. <laughs> Lovingly, of course. Is that is that Pugsley who is uh, trying probably to, so? Yeah, Pugsley or Gomez, one of the other. You. Yeah. Uh, we featured them recently, and they're still here. They shouldn't be because they're both great cats. Uh, but today's cat is hiding. I promise she's not this shy. She she does love attention. She just decided to be standoffish right now. She got now. a little freaked out by the camera. Yes. So uh, so today with this beautiful girl here is Feyre. And she was named after a character in a fantasy book series called Court of Thorn and Roses. Okay. And uh, she, we believe, is probably around four to five years old. So she came in, uh, she was an outdoor cat that had had a litter of kittens, and they asked us to, uh, originally asked us to take the litter of kittens. But unfortunately, by the time we were able to take them in, don't choke me, dude. <laughs> 
Uh, by the time we were able to take them in, three of the or four of the five kittens had not made it. Mm. So she came in with just one kit, and unfortunately, he did not make oh, it either. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, so what we see a lot with outdoor kitties, outdoor mamas, is um, when they're not fixed, uh, they can get pregnant as early as about two weeks after giving birth. They Which can get is pregnant insane. again. Goodness. Poor so things. a lot of times, I don't know for a fact that this is the case with her, but what we see a lot is that, uh, you know, they just had a litter of kittens, they get pregnant again. Uh, we've been nursing this one litter, and now we're, you know, we're using up all of our nutrients and all of our energy. Mm -hmm. And then by the time they get that litter wean, they have another litter, and they haven't had that opportunity to rebuild their own health. Yeah. You know, so they are malnourished from, you know, especially if they're outdoors and they're mm -hmm. fighting for their own food and everything, you know, they're malnourished. Um, so a lot of times the babies, that, you know, makes the babies not be yeah. A, yeah. as healthy, and a lot of times they don't make it. And I would anticipate that's probably what happened with these guys. Oh, um, it, so was, it was cold outside, and then that combined with, you know, mama not having a chance to build her health back yeah. up. Uh, so that is why it is so important to get these cats. You know, if you have a neighborhood cat or something, uh, we have a program that can help you mm -hmm. get them fixed. So not only are they not reproducing, you know, and, and creating a bigger issue, but, you know, it's healthier for the cat itself. Yeah. And then they can help keep your property, you know, mouse-free and, mm -hmm. and, and all that. So. Yep. Good mousers, but uh, we like healthy mousers. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Uh, so you guys do have that program. Um, if somebody would like to find out more information about that program, how would they go about that? Uh, so the best thing to do would be call. Uh, call first, or you can come on in and ask. Um, Angie, our manager, is in charge of that program. So sometimes when people just pop in the door, she's not here. Mm -hmm. uh, at least when they call, I can, you know, if she's not here, I can have them have her call them back. Yeah. Um, so our regular spay and neuter program. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting combed back oh, here. Oh, goodness. Our regular spay and neuter program, uh, you have to live within a certain boundary. Okay. And you have to be on, uh, you have to qualify financially. Mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, TNR program, uh, we're not that strict on the financial part of it. Okay. You do really need to live in the certain boundaries. But, uh, you know, we will help people get those outdoor cats fixed to help eliminate these problems as long as you are doing the TNR and mm -hmm. getting them ear tipped. Yeah. Um, that's our kind of our way of weeding out people who might be um, fibbing and saying, you know, this yeah, is, you know, this is an outdoor cat. Personal it's not cat. really my cat. You know, most <laughs> yeah. of the time, if it's going to be their indoor pet, yeah. they're not going to want the ear tip done. Yeah. And that kind of weeds those people out. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And the, the ear tip is just, um, of what, from what I've learned is it's basically just the way so that you can tell if a cat has been fixed or not from a distance. Right. Because I right. think they used to yeah. do a tattoo, didn't they? Uh, some places still do tattoos. Yeah. Uh, and, and they will do, if the places that do tattoos will do it regardless of whether it's an outdoor cat, an owned cat. Uh, yeah. One of my kittens, uh, when she got fixed at Sedalia, uh, they did a tattoo mm -hmm. on her. Um, but the tattoos are something that you have to be able to pick up the animal and exactly. check them out and look and dig through and if, their fur and, and look through it. If it's a feral it. cat, that's not happening. Yeah. So the <laughs> so the ear tip is is kind of the universal sign mm -hmm. that an outdoor cat is already fixed, and they just take off about a about a quarter of an inch, just the tip of it, uh, usually on the left hand side, I believe. Kind mm -hmm. of depends on the vet. Um, and then that's a really easy way, you know, there's somebody who's out there trapping cats and, and a cat ends up in their kennel and it has that ear tip, then they know they don't have to waste their resources to take it to the vet and then mm -hmm. find out that it's already fixed. They can just release it and then try to trap yeah. somebody else. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good way of being able to tell without having to actually handle yeah. the cat and yep. risk, you know, if it is truly a feral getting bit or something like yes, that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so um, again, you can call, find out about that program. Uh, what do people need to do if they would like to adopt this, uh, this sweet cat? Okay, uh, so she is ready to go. Okay. Uh, we do have the application process, so they can either come in in person and meet her and fill out an application here. 
but we don't do same-day adoptions. Okay. So I usually encourage people to go online to the website before they come in, especially if they're traveling for quite a distance. Mm -hmm. And then that way we can get them pre-approved so that when they do come in, uh, they would be able to take an gotcha. animal home that day. Um, so our application is online at ozarkscatandcanine.com. Uh, just a few questions about, you know, we want to know about what kind of home you live in, whether there's any kids, whether there's uh, currently any pets. Mm -hmm. um, if you do have pets, then we want to talk to your vet, make sure that everybody's up to date on shots and spayed and neutered and all that kind of stuff. Um, people who rent, we need to talk to their landlord to make yeah. sure they're allowed to have pets. You know, so there's a little bit of a process on our end. Um, you know, it usually takes us a day or two, depending on who we have to contact and how quickly they get back to us, um, yeah. you know, on that and everything. And then we'll let you know uh, your approval status and then hopefully get you in to, if you haven't already met the pet, then come in and meet some, pe meet some animals and, and get somebody sent home with you. Well, great. So, uh, <laughs> that's how you adopt, uh, Farrah. Um, she is, she's super sweet, I swear. <laughs> she's just decided that her, her love tank is full, um, and she wants to be back there now. <laughs> that is it for another Furry Friends presented by Our Veterinary. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offer routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. Our Veterinary, with six convenient locations, the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today on Lake TV and Happy Hour with DJ Kyle. Definitely appreciate it. Want to say thanks to our sponsors, SRG Financial Advisors. Thank you so much for uh, making this broadcast possible. Uh, they are home of the Mile Marker Formula. Our good friends at Ozark Barge and Dock. Thank you again and our veterinary at the lake. I want to say thanks to all of our guests today, Stacy Strickland, uh, Professor Jim Paisley, Megan there with our furry friends, and of course that brewery collectible show. It was so great bringing home all that stuff. Thank you so much for joining us today on Happy Hour, and I'm DJ Kyle. We'll see you next time. <laughs>